Hello and welcome to the first impressions review of this, my Honda ADV 350. So I've now done around 500 miles on the scooter. So in addition to talking about all the usual stuff like brakes, comfort, speed, engine handling and all that kind of good stuff, not forgetting of course the 48 litres of underseat storage which is so close to my heart now I just can't even begin to express it. No, in addition to all the usual stuff I'm also going to be giving you my thoughts as a long time motorcyclist I've been riding bikes for 40 years non-stop I've never owned a scooter before so I'm going to be going into the emotional aspects of owning and riding a scooter from a motorcyclist point of view and that might if you're on the cusp give you some feeling as to what it's like first of all though before we get into the nitty-gritty is this advisable And the answer is maybe if you're really sure and confident of where you're going and what the riding is like, then sure. But even then, you know, gravel tracks, nice easy trails, super easy trails where you don't have to turn around. It's absolutely fine. If you're not sure, you're not confident, don't even bother. Although it's got ADV in the model name, it's not an adventure bike, it's not any sort of trail bike. It's a scooter with quite stiff suspension good handling but no what i would say is if you're thinking about going down a gravel track or off-road think of it this way would you take your full dress goldwing tourer down that track if the answer is yes you'll be fine on the adv if the answer is no then consider it and probably go off and go and do something else the other way to think about it is if you're a big easy rider fan captain america chopper peter fonda's chopper would you ride that chopper off road if you're confident then yeah absolutely the adv is great and it's better than captain america's chopper but not by much but it's all right okay suspension and handling let's talk about the handling so the handling if you were to blindfold me and give me the keys to the ADV 50, 350, aside from driving, riding into the River Tweed within three seconds, which wouldn't be very nice, I'd probably think I was on a motorbike. It handles that well. It's neutral, it's not too fast, it's not too quick, and to be honest with you, it feels like a mid-sized standard street bike, you know, like a CB500 or something. Really does handle that well, I'm pretty amazed. You know, it doesn't flop into corners, it's not difficult to get out of corners. On faster bends, undulating sweeping bends, it feels great, feels really stable, and I must admit, that's where I was a little bit worried about a scooter because of the small wheels. But I can honestly say, I don't notice, or I don't even think about the size of the wheels now, particularly in terms of how they impact the handling. So I think that is my strongest compliment. It handles like a mid-size street bike from any of the manufacturers, which is really, really good in my book. Now, from a suspension perspective, and I knew this at the start, it is on the firmer side. It's certainly not plush suspension. But what that firm suspension does is gives you a really good connection to the road. I think it really complements the chassis. And yes, you can feel sharper high frequency bumps through your backside and through your arms, but it never knocks the scooter offline. So from a comfort perspective, yes, you've probably traded a bit of comfort for the firmer suspension, but from a handling perspective, the firmer suspension really works with the rest of the chassis. So it's certainly not one of those kind of city executive scooters where you waft along on a mattress on a magic carpet. You will feel the road imperfections. So if that is important to you, then you might want to try a, you know, a Bergman or a Forza or whatever. But I would say this for me is pretty much perfect. You know, I don't do any town riding really. I do most of my riding outside in the countryside and the suspension is probably on the sporty side for most scooters which is what i particularly love but having said that you know it's not like rock hard suspension it's just a little bit firm compared to most scooters and as i say you might feel it through your backside but road holding is absolutely spot on anyway time to have a look at the engine and the storage Okay, have I mentioned the 48 litres of underseat storage yet? Well, it's got 48 litres of underseat storage, which is extremely capacious. So let's take a look. It's open seat. Oh, look at this. 
I mean, it's a lovely summer's morning, lovely spring morning, so what better than having an al fresco breakfast? So I've got my special USB powered toaster here, which I'm going to plug in in the moment. So aside from the underseat storage, which is just brilliant, it's also got two and a half litres here. And just a little word of advice, if you like your soft fruit, I would advise that you keep your soft fruit in here. So I like my easy peelers. And what I found with my easy peelers is you've got to be careful where you pack them because they can get squished. So if you like your soft fruit, just be very careful. Recommend you put it in your two and a half litres here because nobody wants bruised plums, do they? Anyway, right, let's get the toast going. Sorry, let's get the trumpet going. I do like a crumpet, so a special USB powered toaster. Put that in there and we'll give it a go. Might take some time. Might take a lot of time. Hope I don't flatten the battery. So yeah, USB powered toaster. This is the beauty of scooters. Oh, look at that, it's ready. Look at that, a crumpet. Hmm. Trumpet, easy peelers, brilliant. So, onto the engine then. Now, I've heard other reviewers, other folks say that the engine punches above its weight. Not quite sure what that means, really, to be honest. I think it punches exactly at its weight. So, there's no surprises with the engine. It's 330cc single cylinder, makes 30 odd horsepower, but it goes well. And I think one of the reasons why it goes so well is obviously it's mated to a CVT gearbox, which maximizes the torque characteristics of the engine, essentially. So, you're always in the right place from a gearing perspective. And I think it's that that makes the engine feel really quite responsive, you know, pretty much at all speeds. It holds 75 miles an hour, really easy. And even then, you've probably got about another 15 miles an hour to go. So, yeah, it, it's, it's not unexpectedly fast. It's not unexpectedly quick. It's kind of just right. It's kind of what you expect. It's really easy to use. The CVT gearbox, as I say, really maximizes the characteristics of the engine. And all I would say is, as a motorcyclist, and this isn't a criticism of the scooter, because it is what it is, but as a motorcyclist, I do miss that kind of visceral connection between revs, gearing, and the engine characteristics that you get with a manual gearbox. But, you know, CVT is super easy to use. First one I've used and it's like I thought the engine might run away with me and strange things might happen. But no, it's um, it's a cracker. So yeah, I mean, what's not to like? You know, for such a relatively small package, it does extremely well. So, well, I'm all right with the brakes, to be honest. If you use just the front brake, you will find it's a little bit wooden and it does need quite a bit of a squeeze. But if you do the scooter thing and use the back brake as well, then the bike comes to a really quite rapid stop and deacceleration. So no problems at all. So yeah, I'd recommend using both brakes. So probably, you know, front brake, back brake ratio about 75 to 25. And it's kind of easier compared to a motorcycle because you've got the back brake on the left-hand lever. So yeah, I'm okay with the brakes. Like I say, they're a little bit wooden. Front brake alone is adequate, but combine it with a back brake, then you've got more than enough stopping power. And actually what I like about using both brakes is that you don't really feel as though there's much dive. It almost feels like a, you know, like a 1250 GS, you know, with the uh, paralever suspension, so you don't get any dive on it. So yeah, the brakes, absolutely great, you know, for a machine like this. But like I say, use both brakes, 75, 25. I'm not a big fan of keyless ignition, but actually it works quite well on the Honda and I've actually had no problems at all with the ADV. And while I didn't like the dial at first because it sort of reminded me of a 1980s style Amstrad boombox, you know, with that blue backlight, it's, you know, it's fine once you get used to it. So do that, press it, turns blue, move it to there and then you've got these two buttons where you can open the seat or the fuel and then to switch the ignition on, switch it to that position. So in summary then, the ADV50, what do I think of it? Handles well, the engine's good, it's powerful enough, it's brisk enough, it's quick enough, does 75 miles an hour. The brakes are good, it's got fabulous storage capacity, it's bolted together quite well and it's a really quite reasonable price as well. I mean, what's not to like? So actually, I'm really quite impressed by the ADV350. It's my first and only scooter that I've actually ever ridden. But yeah, very, very impressed with it. And I think if you're in the market for a mid-size scooter, I think most people would be pretty impressed with it. Now, as a motorcyclist, what do I feel about it? Mm, okay, 
it, it's still transport, but it is better than a bus, a lot better than a bus, mainly because you don't, still don't have to speak to people on that bus. So yeah, it is transport, but it's good transport. And in a way, it's kind of got me back to the reasons as to why I got into motorcycling in the first place, which was basically to escape my parents' house, get off a push bike and see what's around the corner and take a few photographs on the way. And the ADV has kind of got me back to that. So I don't whiz about on it, but it handles well and it's good fun. But it allows me to appreciate this. And as an accolade, as a probably the strongest accolade I can give the ADV 350, although I still want a motorbike and hopefully I'll be able to get on a motorbike next year, I think I'm going to keep the ADV 350. And if I get the chance to go to Europe again, I think I would go on the ADV 350. Because for me, riding on two wheels now isn't about whizzing around. It never really was about whizzing around, but you kind of get sucked into that kind of uh, mode of thinking, don't you? So the ADV 350, you don't whiz around on it. I want to go to Europe and I want to see some beautiful things, enjoy myself and relax and be in a degree of comfort. And the ADV will allow me to do that. You know, not least because the seat is the most incredible piece of upholstery I've probably ever sat on. It's so comfortable. Add into that that the Scoot is really easy to ride, handles great, it's got firmish suspension, a good engine what is not to like and it's a pretty bargain price really five six uh, five thousand six hundred here in the uk it's a good price and the thing will last forever so in summary yeah i really like it don't love it i really like it but if you're in the market for a mid-size scooter i'm not sure how you, you would not go wrong with the adv 350 it's that good right the bus i am never getting on a bus ever again was it margaret thatcher who had that quote so if you're a bloke over 14 you go in a bush you're a failure i don't know did she say that bloody thatcher anyway right more later bye